We're doing it live, gamers. It's patch review time. And it's actually, for all the YouTube viewers out there, it's a pretty big patch. We've got some big quality of life, better graphics options, different colored titles in the game, even one for Saros as well. New version of Saros CM. We've got a balance patch going on there. Maybe they even fixed the guild hall. I don't know about that one. That one's unconfirmed, okay? We're clueless. Absolutely clueless. A couple of bug fixes, all that kind of wonderful stuff. And even some extra changes that we didn't see in the balance patch as well. But anyway, let's get into it. We'll do the overview here as well. First things first, we've actually got a very long-awaited feature added to the game. You could actually now finally tune your post-processing. This is actually really good because previously, if you wanted to have stuff like the game looking a little bit higher contrasty, all that kind of stuff, or just changing some of these things. You had to turn it all on or all off, but now you can basically turn the bloom off. And the bloom, it might look kind of okay here, and you know what? You're right. It is pretty okay here. But then if we go to the Wizard's Tower, look what happens. Just look what happens to the game, guys, in the Wizard's Tower. Like This is, this is where things get absolutely brutal. Take a look at this, my friends, after this 15-year loading screen goes through. Also, we're over 160,000 builds of Guild Wars 2. They're hitting that compile button a lot. We've made it. Wait, okay, there we go. And this is where the game looks very intense. It's very... <laughs> <laughs> the, the bloom is... And this is not even the worst spot. In some areas of PvP and World vs. World, it'll actually melt your eyeballs off. Uh, but now you can kind of have the best of both worlds. You can turn the bloom off if you want. And also have the game look a little bit higher contrast. Right? The game can look a bit washed out uh, like this, but you can have the contrast up a little bit more. The color grading... And also not have the bloom. Really, really good feature, actually, in my opinion. Another massive quality of life feature coming up next, by the way, guys. Look at this. Let's go. Oh, they also improved load times, apparently. Nice. That's a bonus there. But here's a massive one. Check this out. All of these gobblers, now they're just like the snowflake gobbler. They open a little window, and you can click on it. This is massive. No more using an auto clicker for the candy corn gobbler. You just immediately type in a number. Check this out. 300 candy corn, boom! Instantly get all of our XP boost. There is a slight issue with it just this second that it's actually giving less XP boost than it, it used to. It looks like they just made it exactly even. It used to be slightly biased in favor of certain things, but they're actually fixing that. They've already confirmed that that was not actually intentional. So that will get put back pretty soon. But yeah, mega quality of life. That makes the candy corn gobble an insanely, awesomely, very cool item. You definitely want to have this thing because now it's not even inconvenient to use and it just massively upgrades your like mastery leveling experience, world versus world and PvP reward track gain, all that kind of wonderful stuff. Even world versus world rank gain. Actually, really nice quality of life feature in my opinion. Um, it's it's good that they got by. I wasn't expecting this honestly. It's just completely out of the blue. Very very nice actually. Then of course we have some of the things that we know. We have the Corteria mastery that now. Uh, doesn't work in raids and in uh, raid challenge modes in strike and raid challenge basically this one said when you uh, res someone you don't get down penalty uh, you don't get down penalty so in other words you can just go down over and over again you won't fully die now if you're in a raid or strike challenge mode cm only right if you go down so too much you'll actually eventually instantly die just like in world versus world or PvP. Does it really make it that much harder? No. I think there aren't that many situations outside of very new training groups where this is really going to do anything. I don't think it really makes hard content harder uh, because you just don't really go down that often without wiping, I guess, uh, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, I actually like the idea. It's a, it's a good idea behind it. In my opinion, overall, it is a pretty good idea idea if you ask me of course next up we have the temple of feather challenge mode so basically uh all they did with this by the way was they just reduced the health it's 106 million on the challenge mode as opposed to 130 on the legendary mode when you interact with the challenge mode it gives you little options you can pick one or the other which is actually really cool in my opinion really really cool um i was actually hoping they were going to nerf it a little bit more because i think one thing that strike missions do actually lack a lot right now is a bit of a middle ground for kind of intermediate players who want a challenge but not something too brutal like the really harder challenge modes i think it is actually still too hard for that in my opinion um because it's still very punishing mechanically and the dps check is still going to be relevant I think, um, you know, for again, for kind of intermediate players, it's certainly not free. 
uh, that's for sure. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting to see them actually explore this a little bit more and maybe actually go a little bit further. And I would also like to see some mechanical changes as well. I think some of the, it would be cool if the mechanics themselves got easier. In particular, I think Gluttony is still really overtuned. You're basically going to be forced to leave, you, you have to de-empower Gluttony and that means you can't do some stuff like um, going only one green, right? And dealing with more orbs and stuff, which I think will be a more approachable mechanic set, but Gluttony is still giga overtuned. You, you, you definitely can't do that uh, in its current state. So I'd like to see if they could actually have like a proper third delineation of difficulty rather than just changing this. Like maybe making the damage output in the Enrage a little bit more forgiving so you can let a few more stacks in and still pass it. Uh, looking at Gluttony mechanics, uh, maybe even changing the greens a little bit just to make it a bit more of a smooth difficulty curve rather than it, it's still pretty damn hard like i would still say that even the nerf version is harder than htcm uh which again is i think not what i read were going for i don't know maybe they were it's hard to say a couple of bug fixes here as well which is also really nice we definitely love to see that and also on this topic as well uh, there's actually a colored title for beating the legendary. You can see it there. It's Legendary Conqueror of Saras. And this also applied to some of the other titles too, like the Ultimate Dominator. Uh, it's actually golden, right, for the higher tiers of Ultimate Dominator. And this is pretty cool, actually. I like this idea. It makes the titles a little bit special, a little bit exciting uh, across the board. Really, really nice, actually, in that regard. So uh, there'll always be this kind of uh, big stretch goal for teams to kind of push for, going for this cool kind of lilac purple title there as well. Uh, but yeah. There you go. Pretty fun stuff. Moving on. A bunch of new achievements have been added. We kind of talked about this last time in one of the other kind of the pre-patch review. And I actually really like this stuff. Same with the Ultimate Donor. You can grind up to two and a half million kills. You can grind all of the PvP win achievements a lot more. And a really fun one, actually. True Dragon, which is PvP rank 469. Nice. And I'm, I don't know for sure, but I can guess. This is probably the same amount of PvP required as the original Dragon rank. Uh, in uh, in the core release of the game, which was kind of like insanely high. No one was ever going to get there. There was a couple of achievements like this in PvP and World vs. World that are just like insane. There was like Yak Slapper. You've got to kill 100,000 Yaks or something crazy like that uh, to, to get that title before they nerfed it all down. This is actually really fun. So kind of like the, the old Dragon rank being put into the game as true dragon and oh my goodness i actually completely forgot about this we actually have 32 slot bags available from world versus world and pvp they're actually very comparable to the boreal bags that you can get from the ice bridge saga you put in the i try ingots right and some of the eternal ice shards and you can get the bags at a discount with less runes of holding just like that except instead of um the i try ingots and stuff you use uh, boxes of Grandmaster Marks or Grandmaster Mark Shards in World Plus, where it's the boxes in PvP. They're kind of interchangeable because um, obviously you can convert the shards into boxes, then you could do it with a PvP one if you want to preserve your World Plus World currency or, you know, vice versa. All of that, well, not vice versa. You can't turn the box into shards. That's not important, though. What is important is that I think it's actually really good. It means you can get bags without crafting. It means you can get bags by playing PvP. You are going to have to potentially sacrifice legendary progression if you're into that sort of thing, because it uses the same currency that you need for legendaries. But you probably have a lot of those anyway. Um, you know, if, especially if you're not going for legendaries or if you've already got your legendary set. So really nice thing that you can just kind of work towards and improve your inventory space over time in these game modes in a very cost efficient way. Um, Grandmaster marks are a little bit pricey, obviously. So you have to bear in mind that it may not be necessarily much better in terms of account value overall, but you know, it's certainly better in terms of like raw gold and there's no crafting. So big win if you ask me. Uh, the implementation of the Keep Lord Healing skill is actually quite cool. I was a bit worried about this change, but I actually quite like it. Now, at 75 and 25% of Keep Lords, they will get a break bar, and then you'll have to CC them to prevent their heal skill. I actually like that. It means that you have a, a coordination element there, and it means that it's not going to be weird to have to hold cc on an infinite break bar and then try and break it right at the last second to try and get that now it's going to be like the bar is going to pop up it's going to channel for five seconds and you've got to break the bar yeah honestly i don't hate that it's a bit weird buffing the lords in general but i guess it makes them a little bit more interactive or whatever um and yeah they probably made the break bar a little bit easier to break as well because the break bar on these things is huge when it's all scaled up so we'll have to see how that one kind of pans out there as well and another little world versus world change here as well the Siege Disabler is now a Siege Disruptor. So instead of just immediately shutting down something for a duration, it now just reduces the outgoing Siege damage by 66% and makes Siege devices take 66% damage increased as well for the duration. Obviously, this is a nerf. 
um, overall. Uh, in general, I feel like it's... I'd probably be in favor of stuff like this. I think the Siege Doctor is kind of frustrating to deal with. Not really a big deal if you're in a large group because you just spam Reflects and then it can't really do anything and you can just block the projectiles on it to shut them down. But in general, I think things that push the defender's advantage too much is not ideal. I don't really like it that much, realistically, uh, because it's already pretty easy to defend in Guild Wars 2 anyway. What, like, you know, Siege is really good. Uh, like, you've got Emergency Waypoint, you've got uh, Fortifications... All that kind of stuff. It takes a while to break through. Like, a couple of good defenders can actually hold off a Zerg for a pretty long amount of time. Which is obviously fair, given that, you know, it's kind of a siege warfare situation. But, I don't know. I don't think this change is actually super impactful. Because, again, like, m smaller groups will be a bit annoyed by this, I guess. But you are going to be really... No, I mean, like, uh, it's going to be less punishing for smaller groups when they get disabled now because that's when you're going to get disabled most of the time is being in a smaller group where you don't necessarily have like really good reflect coverage or it's kind of hard to uh hard to kind of bully away all of the siege disruptors at the same time so i don't think it's a huge change overall but again weakening the defensive advantage i think is actually good i think attacking is good you want to make it fun to attack objectives like that's kind of like the lifeblood of of making world versus what interesting from an objective standpoint so i'm kind of in favor of this overall I am an enjoyer, and I think that is actually all of the kind of quality of life or little little kind of uh, mini updates across the world. Some really impactful ones, actually. Like, all of that stuff, like, honestly, if that was just the patch, this would be a pretty nice patch, honestly. It would significantly improve the game straight up, right? Um, not bad at all. Not bad at all, in my opinion. A um, couple of other things uh, here, actually, right at the bottom. I, I kind of briefly alluded to this one. Fix an issue that caused the player population limit in Guild Halls to be lower than intended. I'm not totally con sure they're talking about the instancing issues here. I felt like they maybe would have said the instancing issues, but this will require some investigation. If they're actually trying to fix the population limit issue in the Guild Hall, here's the TLDR on that. Basically, the Guild Hall can be really weird when you're putting loads of people in. It will kind of shunt people off into separate instances instead of putting everyone in the same one, and the limit, the cap of people in the guild hall doesn't increase correctly. I'm not totally sure if that's what they're talking about here, but the fact that they're even looking at that type of area is actually really cool, especially seeing as they've already done stuff like the open PvP in the guild hall, and they're clearly looking at kind of player curated content a little bit there, which I think is actually a pretty good idea. You know, I, I, I give that a, a high rating there. But anyway, Let's go ahead and get into the actual patch notes themselves. Now, we already did talk about this in the previous video where we went over the balance patch, so I'm not going to go through all of these in painstaking detail. We certainly don't need to do that. We'll kind of be mostly talking about some of the newer changes. You want to see my thoughts on that, you can go see the, the previous video, but we'll give a bit of a recap of what's going on here as well. So we've got some buffs to Elementalist, especially in PvP, uh, notably to Sword, uh, and also a full rework to the arcane skills. I think a lot of the arcane skills, it's more like a rework in terms of flavor, I want to say. Elemental Surge, I feel like it's kind of a difficult trait to take a lot of the time um, as Elementalist because you really want to go for evasive arcana. But these arcane skills are honestly pretty fun, if you ask me. Like the arcane wave in particular, I think is pretty cool. Look at this, you just leap around like crazy. I think that's got some potential. A bit of mobility. A bit of damage uh, in the mix there as well. Like this is, I've got the the new trait on here as well. It's an immobilize. So it's kind of like an immobilize. You can leap at them, you daze them, and immobilize them. It's that's a decent skill, right? And a blast finisher too. Does some critical damage, and of course it's got two charges as well. So pretty nifty uh, across the board. But I think elementalist utility skills are actually pretty competitive. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty competitive. It's kind of hard to fit some of the stuff in on a lot of elementalist builds because Ellie util skills are pretty packed like you really want to pay, take a lot of like very very good skills here in general very nice quality of life on rust frenzy this is the sword three um where you'd previously locked in place kind of like you know bleeding people but now you can actually move we see a similar change to guardian as well in that regard like on sword three which is a pretty cool change like will it help ellie out in pvp i mean they're trying to push catalyst a little bit a little bit of fresh air catalyst which is a build that definitely fell out of favor a bit by buffing up water trident giving it some more damage uh but i uh, don't know We'll see, to be honest. Uh, we shall see indeed. And Aquaman's a training. A little buff to Tempest in PV. Well, all game modes, actually. Just more healing in general. 20% healing modifier on Heal Tempest. Heal Tempest still needs some work in PV, in my opinion. It very much um, needs 
it, it very much needs like some boon radius improvements and boon application improvements to make heal tempers like competitive with like how insanely good healers are right now in PVE. There is a new change though. I've got bad news. Tempest, uh, the of course the new pistol Tempest build doing a lot of damage. Does get nerfed a little bit, not a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of surprised they did actually because I was kind of expecting them to keep a lot of really high DPS builds kind of around the 47k mark. Um, that seems to be like where things might end up going, but it looks like maybe a hair too high for Arena Net's taste. So that is getting reduced down a little bit. Is it still going to be a really strong build? Absolutely. Like it was giga damage and now it will still be slightly less giga damage. Some really cool quality of life on Wash the Pain Away makes it much easier to land this with a larger initial heal radius as well, and the, the first two pulses is much easier to land, much more consistent. So if you're a little bit spread, it will still land on people. And then, we talked about this in the last patch, but we have this theme. Alacrity is being removed from World vs. World, and honestly, it's a very good thing as well. I would actually expect to see most Alacrity eventually get removed over the next couple of patches from World vs. World, uh, or at least anything that gives high uptime of Alacrity, because it just isn't good for the game like world versus world has had some issues over the last couple of months with very high sustain builds uh very notably chronomancer and scourge making the game very scuffed and just very over sustained hard to kill people you just kind of like sit on top of each other and just spam abilities until people start dying and this patch really addresses this. I'm actually kind of excited to get in World vs. World because I think it's going to be a lot more fun, actually, uh, with the alacrity reductions in uh, in World vs. World. I think it's going to improve it uh, a lot, better, a lot actually. Because I think a lot of the problematic builds, again, very notably Chronomancer and Scourge, are being addressed here. Uh, or at least, like, the initial steps, like, kind of the first steps there. So that'll be a bit of a running theme. That'll be a bit of a running theme here. We love to see that. But yeah, honestly, it would be cool if you see kind of the resurgence of, uh, you know, Weaver, for example, in PvP with these sword changes. And, you know, Fresh Air Cat. I think it is playable. I saw a couple of people playing it in the last monthly AT. So it's not like dead dead, but it has been pushed out of the meta a little bit. That's for sure. Uh, moving on to Elementalist. Uh, good news for all the Hollow fans. Hollow's getting some pretty significant buffs here in PvE. Uh, very notably, Glue Shot offhand. Very strong power coefficient now with 2.5 in PvE. Alongside some sword changes. Uh, they just kind of changed sword rather than buffed it necessarily. Now the auto attack doesn't do as much cooldown reduction, but they move the cooldown down on the other abilities. So basically, you auto attack a little bit less. You hit your other buttons a little bit more. Seems good. And some more damage on Radiant Arc. So yeah, Power Hollow is going to slap. This is going to be big damage, uh, to be honest, in PvE. Like with the um, big, big damage. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this too, actually. Firework Relic got fixed. Uh, basically, it looks like they fixed all of the skills not correctly tracking uh, Firework Relic. So stuff like Grenade Barrage and also stuff like uh, Guardian Greatsword 5 also probably got fixed for example, in that regard. So some really good stuff there as well. It's just going to be improving a damage modifier, right? Like Relic, some builds were kind of forced to run Thief Relic, for example, because their abilities weren't working correctly. Now you can run Firework Relic for 2% more damage modifier. Love to see it. Very nice. But anyway, um, yeah, Hollow buffs, it's going to pump. Uh, hollow Rifle buffs as well in PvP. And these are actually relevant. Like, Rifle actually is seeing some play right now in Holosmith in PvP. So, cool with our reactions here. Just more damage output and a bit more mobility. Slippery potential there as well uh, for Hollow. Nice. I think there's some choices you can play with Hollow, though. I don't think everyone's playing Rifle. I think there's still the, the sword builds going around. But I have actually seen some players playing Rifle as well. Uh, I, I still feel like Sword is going to be better just because, like, you're going to have way more sustainability there as well. Just, like, having Shield offhand is so powerful, honestly, on NG. It's such a classic weapon for basically every NG build that exists in PvP. But, you know, it's always good to have options there as well. Bit of quality of life here and there as well with Medkit just for heal mechanist, heal scrapper, all this kind of stuff. It's just kind of in the mix. Um, so Infusion Bomb just works properly now. Uh, some bigger angles on these skills. Missile Velocity goes up so it's easier to land like your Medkit 1 and 2. Love to see that. Easy peasy. Nothing too crazy. Automated Medical Response. This is kind of a weird skill that was one of those passives that just got removed from the game. Now you just get regen whenever you use your tool belt skill. Not super relevant, let's be honest. Like, regen application for NG is not really a big deal. Maybe this would see change. Maybe this get fixed or change additionally at some point in the future, but yeah. Ah, uh, no. Not a super exciting trait overall. 
in that regard. Uh, Mechalugs. This getting reworked is interesting, though, actually. Because this used to give you movement speed and reduced incoming condition duration. Now you get resistance on dodging, very similar to Warrior's trait, um, that also basically does the exact same thing. Resistance is a very strong boon in competitive because it, you know, it makes you immune to stuff like weakness, immune to chill, immune to immobilize, right? immune to cripple, all that kind of good stuff. It's a good trait, actually. It's a powerful trait. Uh, in this regard. So I could definitely see this, uh, seeing some play there as well. On, on Maybe on Hollow a little bit less though, because Hollow can kind of break out of stuff like this pretty easily because it has the break out of all the slow stuff trait in Hollow Smith. So might have some overlap there, but you know, you could definitely see it pop up on some uh, non-Hollow builds like Scrapper and so on, for example, could uh, end up taking this. And yeah, Bunker Down, very similar here. Do they just? I, I think they just didn't like this being passive. Then they wanted to make this kind of a more active thing. And this is a bit of a theme we've seen with some of the next patches. They want to make this stuff more active and less passive. So instead of just procking randomly, it's like you need to do something, right? Like when you disable an enemy, now you spawn a mine and it spawns right on the enemy as well, which is kind of funny, right? Like you spawn a mine right under them. So they've got to move when you when you land a crit on them. And the internal cooldown goes in from four to one seconds too, actually. And increase the mine power coefficient to uh, 0.95. And the banish cleanses a condi and its base healing has been increased from 502 to 593. Um, so, I mean, you probably can't proc this quite as much, though, because, you know, you have to CC them every one second or every four seconds, right, to get the same amount of value here as well. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's... It, I, I like the idea of spawning a mine under someone, you know? That's, uh, that is content, you know? That is, uh, that is some content right there, guys. You love to see that. And then some big buffs here as well, the holo. And this is kind of the follow-up here as well. In PvE only, of course. Uh, just... More damage. So this is when you use the extended storage capacity unit. Um, when you're above 100% heat, 50% more damage on laser disc. 20 second cooldown on blade burst. Photon wall cooldown goes down. Launch wall goes down there as well. 50% damage increase on launching that wall out. Particle accelerator. Power cushion goes up as well. And the damage increase went above 100% from 20% to 50% PV only. So basically, if you're running the enhanced uh, storage unit, you are going to blast on hollow, which is clearly the build they want you to run. Uh, alongside your sword. So yes, Power Hollow is going to be Omega DPS here. You absolutely love to see that. And these are actually basically bug fixes, right? So when you swap out a Photon Forge to a kit, it wouldn't proc Prismatic Converter or Solar Focusing Lens. Now it does. That's pretty much just a, a bug fix, realistically, for that one. Mechanical Genius. Reduce the recharge penalty for mech command skills when far away from mech from 50 to 20%. Good change. I think I still think mechanical juice is kind of annoying, honestly. It's I, I'm not even sure if it needs to exist in the way it does, but this makes it less punishing uh, when your mech is straying around. This is kind of more of a thing. I feel like on um, well on what on heal mech fights where you're kind of kiting and you're not near your mech, or DPS mech builds where your mech can be really annoying, especially like the power builds that you play with the fire the guns. The mech has a tendency just to kind of AFK out at range and then be, you know, be away from you, which is, it's kind of annoying and that, it's just how it behaves inherently because it's a ranged pet, basically. Uh, and that's going to make it, I guess, slightly less annoying in that regard. Guardian. Guardian, 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 Guardian. What have you got here? So, first of all, Condi Willbender, very strong build with pistol, has now been nerfed. And again, I, I'm a little surprised about this, like uh, some of these changes actually, because I was kind of expecting some of the new weapons to be kind of at the new power level, uh, to basically, they need to make some of these rules better than Condivert in terms of DPS. So I was expecting them to kind of allow stuff to power creep a little bit, so Condivert stays where it is. Because the thing is, let me tell you a story, guys. Ada are in a really weird spot right now because of Sarah CM. If they nerf certain builds, the fight will kind of just become impossible, basically. Or like, you know, they if you go below a certain DPS threshold, you just can't do it anymore. So where we're at right now is kind of the floor for power in a lot of ways. Um, so I was kind of expecting Anet to let the power creep go a little bit rampant, uh, go up a little bit. Uh, but it looks like maybe a little bit too much uh, with this stuff. You know, just, uh, just a little bit. Uh, will the build still be good? Absolutely, yeah. Like, the build blasts. It is still going to blast, so nobody panic. Uh, very, very strong build. Uh, I guess caught in the crossfire here is poor old Firebrand, of course, because everyone loves pistol right now on a Guardian, so 
some nerfs to Firebrand as well. And, and, and that build has fallen out of favor, but not really because of its damage, to be honest. It's more the boon application. Like, Firebrand's boon application, I can't believe I'm saying this, right? Imagine this, guys, in current year. Firebrand's boon application is actually a little bit behind a lot of its competition, and, and that's where it actually does fall behind, compared to uh, Herald, for example, is like the really obvious one. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure that will be addressed at some point as well. Next! Zealot's Defense. You can move while casting a skill. Very nice. That will make this skill way more fun to play. Guardian in general has a lot of um, animation lock on it. It's a pretty animation locky spec with, you know, when you have sword and you have great sword. This alleviates that. I think it's just going to make the spec more fun to play, let's be honest. Uh, makes it more usable in PvP as well because you can kind of chase people down while using it and reposition while using it. So more usable there. But I think the big thing here, it's just going to be more fun to play, you know, it, it, and, and that's that's nice, isn't it? Feel my wrath. This is actually really cool, to be honest, because this actually does help Firebrand out a little bit in PvE and other game modes too. I think in other game modes, you're going to really struggle to run this on support Firebrand or on a, a lot of Guardian modes because renewed focus is such a sick skill. To be honest, it's so good to have that reload on all of your really powerful abilities. So in compared of, I think it's tough, but in PvE, this is really nice. Now you actually have super speed access on Firebrand because for a long time, right, like everyone else was getting stability in Aegis and then, you know, Firebrand wasn't really, you know, getting out of the other utility. Now Firebrand actually grabs some of the utility that it doesn't have. You could also take this as a utility pick, obviously, on a DPS build as well. Bear that in mind. Not just for a support build. Uh, but really cool. It's powerful as well. Like four seconds of super speed on a 600 radius. Really nifty bit of utility. And bear in mind, you're always going to over crap, over, over crap, over cap quickness and fury anyway. So you actually have a little bit of flexibility on how you use this. You can kind of hold this when you might need that super speed. Pretty easy to do that, uh, in my opinion. So yeah, you can absolutely make that happen. I like it. I like it. Vigorous precision. And again, this is kind of removing that, uh, you know, uh, you know, removing this kind of random proc chance, basically, with the crit. Now, whenever you dodge, you get vigor. I mean, yeah. Is this the same? Honestly, it's it's pretty similar. I don't think this really is going to change the power level of the trait that much, to be perfectly honest with you. I guess maybe it's slightly worse maybe because the vigor duration goes down but i guess you know you could like spam dodges and get infinite vigor it's probably gonna have pretty similar uptime to be honest focus mastery this is arguably just like a quality of life prop from this trait when i apply when shield off expires instead of when it activates yeah blah 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 whatever uh redemption litany of wrath from three to four seconds this is actually a pretty powerful trait but it's in quite a competitive spot that's the issue um this one it's hard to take this i think um is the problem because it is yeah it, it well actually uh is it i think you can take this on dps builds like dps core guard actually that can uh run this because it can be with stalwart defender and communal defenses in valor so yeah you, you can actually take this you can take this on um on a dps core guardian build and this is, and Litany is one of the best effects in the game, right? It's basically like mega lifesteal pretty much. So you can heal yourself a whole lot uh, in that regard. So this is actually a pretty nice change there as well. And this is one thing that we do see actually. ArenaNet do want core PvP builds to be good actually. Uh, so that might be kind of what they're going for here actually with, with this particular ability. Because uh, yeah, that's, they do want core builds to be good. There's like some pretty decent core builds out there. And, and, and ArenaNet have consistently been trying to improve them as well. Glacial Heart. The trait no longer chills and damages enemies that you disable and instead heals the user when disabling, immobilizing, or chilling an enemy. Yeah, this one, yeah, this is the one that is really competitive because this competes with the Virtues trait line where you get more damage when you activate a Virtue or the Condi Cleanse trait. Uh, really tricky, I think, to take that because especially in competitive, like those other traits are really nifty. And in PvE, the more damage is obviously a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, so I think this one is in a very competitive spot. Uh, as well there. Uh, I kind of like the old version as well, to be honest. I, I'm not sure if I like this rework. I, I like that, you know, when you, you know, you CC'd someone, you'd also chill them at the same time. You know, I'm not, not sure how I, uh, I feel about this, but I guess it does give some sustain to hammer builds because you can just, you know, every time you hit people with your glacial blow, you'll also be healing yourself. And a lot of hammer skills, like hammer's got a lot of CC, you can heal yourself by doing that. The number's not super impressive, to be honest, uh, but yeah, I guess it is what it is. Yeah. Buffs heal Willbender. I mean, look, you know, 
people get mad at me for saying this, but uh, Heal Wilbund is just, it's a build that I'm not impressed by. Um, I've even seen gameplay of it. Like, and whenever I see gameplay of Heal Wilbund, it's like, man, this feels very mediocre. It's uh, very, very, you know, it's not like, it's, it's playable, obviously, but I'm not impressed by it. It is what it is. A couple of Wilbund changes here as well. Um, you know, this one is epic. Screw all this stuff. This stuff, irrelevant. No one cares. Check this out. Heaven's Palm on Willbender. Okay, this this skill though evades attacks and finishes your target foe if they're down and no other enemies are nearby. I love that. It's so good. You just like, bam! Stomp someone with that. That is what we love to see. Again, I think tragically, Renewed Focus is going to outcompete this a lot of the time, I think. Uh, maybe the evade is good enough. Like the, You can get some stain by evading. Uh, like while you're casting this ability and shower stepping around, I guess like maybe there's no, who knows maybe the stomp is really good uh, and it's enough. But I if I had to guess, like renewed focus is just so powerful. It's such a powerful resustain and it allows you to disengage. It recharges all of your dashes, right? So you can just run away, disengage. You can go more aggressive, right? I don't know. I, I think it's gonna really struggle. Like th this is kind of more of a renewed focus problem though, potentially rather than a than a Heaven's Palm problem. And I, I think there's a really complicated issue there because Guardian in PvP and has always been kind of like the... Um, it's always been balanced around Renewed Focus, which is definitely unhealthy, right? Uh, but they'd have to do quite a lot of work to untangle that, I think. Uh, is Yeah, it, it's going to take them a while to kind of untangle that. Here's a big one. We're doing the Chrono changes here. Chronomancer changes. Here is the deal. Big nerfs in World vs. World. Big boon application reduction uh, on concentration. So magical concentration, boon duration is down a lot in World vs. World. Chaos Aura is down massively. This is a lot of boon spam in World vs. World from 4 seconds down to 2 seconds. Temporal Enchanter, no longer increasing glamour skills. Guess what? That includes Null Field. So less boon rip. Boon rip also massively had boon rip and condi cleanse uh, nerfed big in World vs. World. Uh, five seconds down to two seconds in World vs. World only. Absolutely brutal change there as well. Uh, but it's important to think about this in context, right? Basically, the stability application and the boon application in general of this build is going down a lot. Because um, bear in mind, we've got no alacrity on Scourge anymore in World vs. World. Spoiler alert. World vs. World only, nobody panic. No alacrity on Ellie in... Um, uh, in World vs. World 2. So the application of boons is going down significantly here. And that ultimately is the problem. So I do like these changes uh, quite a lot, actually, uh, in this regard. Um, you're going to have to really use your stability well or end up packaging the additional stability, which they added in Well of Precog. This skill is kind of loaded, by the way, uh, in PvE now, because this is now an a, a Pulsing Aegis and AoE stability on one button. Very nifty, actually. So you have the option of going Giga Stability and going with the Mantra and also Precog, but you can also kind of get away with just Precog, and that also packages in Aegis at the same time. So very utility skill efficient uh, in PvE here, actually. Like, really, really efficient um, in that regard. Overall, I am liking these support changes, though, to World vs. World. Because, again, the big issue right now is going to be that sustain. Uh, and I think these changes are going to address that pretty nicely with these cooldown increases, duration decreases, uh, and chaos uh, chaos armor nerfs as well on the chaotic transference that we can see there. And look, I, I, can't, I can't believe we're living in this reality, guys. Can you believe that we're living in reality here, guys? I, power Mirage is a thing now in PvE. Let's go. Uh, the dagger ambush attack is going up in damage, but the big, the, the star of the show, Mirage Thrust, 3.0 power coefficient in PvE. Split Surge, 0.85, but that hits three times um, in PvE as well. Dune Cloak as well. Now, whenever you, you get an extra ambush attack, basically, whenever you shut two or more clones, you can do that super easily in PvE, so you can then spam more of these really high-powered um, abilities to do more damage. Actually, really cool. You know, it's one of the very few builds in the game that doesn't exist in PvE, right? Like, almost everything works in PvE. And actually, Power Mirage was one of the very few things that just wasn't really a thing. And cool. Now it actually is. That's actually fun. I love to see that, guys. I absolutely love to see it. Very cool. I don't know exactly how much DPS it does, but it can't be that bad. My only qualm with this is that why is one of the main DPS skills a, a movement skill? This is going to be annoying, right? You have to spam leaps all over the place uh, in order to do DPS. I feel like any build like that is always going to be annoying, but 
Whatever. Okay, we'll we'll deal with it. And some power virtuoso buffs here as well. Infinite Forge. Previously, you basically took the condi, uh, the condi, the bleed trait, because there was no other better option in Grandmaster. Now you can take Infinite Forge, and you get two free blades after full casting a blade song skill with five blades, in addition to its previous effect. So yeah, love it. Loads of blades, more DPS for power vert. I mean, yeah, it's a build that was basically only HTCM usable, so perfectly acceptable in my mind uh, to make that build a little bit better. And I think buffing ranged power builds in general is a good idea. There's kind of a lack of ranged power builds in Guild Wars 2 uh, from a balance perspective. And here we go, Necro. So we have got some new changes here. Really cool. Um, and it's looking at Necro Sword. Surprised they didn't buff the damage in PvE. The damage in PvE is a little underwhelming. I think that's because they want it to be like the ranged option, so maybe they don't want it to be like as high DPS as some of the melee options. Hard to see. Maybe they just didn't get to that. But they are reducing the HP cost down. Because these were pretty high, actually. Look at these numbers, right? They, there was a lot of HP cost in using these, which is very expensive in PvP, where your health is very important, of course. So nerfing that down significantly should help this. Bear in mind, it was actually seeing a little bit of play already, actually, in, um, in PvP. So that actually should help it out uh, a fair bit, just making it a little bit more health efficient, a little bit less risky to use these skills. So you can kind of actually use them without worrying about actually killing yourself which is certainly not ideal uh that's for sure as well and the big stuff here is just big nerfs to scourge in world versus world you don't get alacrity anymore you get vigor sand cascade barrier cooldown going up massively M cooldown increase on sandstorm shard so less prot less condi cleanse less condi cleanse here as well of course and serpent siphon cooldown going up as well in world so just less barrier application uh less boons less spam less condi cleanse less everything really good less application it's good um, and bear in mind, guys, they already giga nerfed this build like, really hard by making the transfusion cooldown go up a lot, and it was still good after that. Um, so let's see if this will finally kill it. I think these are pretty hefty nerfs. So if this, I mean, this this should kill the build. I kind of felt like it was nearly killing it. I feel like it kind of killed it last time, but it actually just lived on because it turns out the alacrity and barrier was just so good. Because, of course, more alacrity is more boon application, more boon rip, more CC, more damage, right? So more healing, more everything, right? So it just the vicious cycle, right? Feeds into itself, like, really, uh, really negatively in in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that's how it goes. Plague Signet, more usable for PvP. Did sacrifice a little bit of the flavor, I think. Uh, but hey, you know... It is what it is, you know. I, I, I think Aina do need to be careful about this. They have been removing flavor from some abilities a little bit um, to make them more functional. And that is a worthy goal. But, you know, I think you've got to be careful. There's definitely a line that you need to, to draw. Because this skill is so iconic, right? Like stealing condies from your allies and then sending them uh, to your team is a, a cool ability. But, yeah, not so much fun when you randomly steal fear from your ally or immobilize from your ally. Making it a, a little less playable, that's for sure. Not ideal overall. Signets of Suffering now uh, causing signets to lifesteal when you strike enemies. Uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't look super strong, to be honest. It's like a little bit of life. So a bit more spike damage, I guess. Uh, but I don't know. Like some of the other traits in Spite are pretty good. And it's, it, it might be a bit difficult to compete with that. Especially, uh, very notably, the more damage when you have Might trait is really good. And I believe competes with this. Uh, so a bit bit hard to fit that in. But I like that they're kind of improving it and making it a bit more exciting, right? This used to be a really cool trait and it kind of became very, very boring, right? With just like, oh yeah, your signets remove a, a boon now. But yeah, there you go. Uh, and Harbinger. This is the big one. Look at this. Here we go. Uh, so Vile Vile's improved. This has Elixir skills grant protection. This protection can be shared with Twisted Medicine. This is actually kind of a nice change now, actually, because it means that you do take this as a DPS loss on, say, a Quickness Harbinger, but you can give prot on Quickness Harbinger now by sharing it with Twisted Medicine. Pretty cool. Um, helps heal Harbinger, which is a meme build, but now you can give prot on that build as well, I guess. Nice, nice, nice. We love to see that. But that's irrelevant. Check this out. Here we go. Power Harbinger. Should this build exist? No. But Arena is determined to make it happen, guys. Here we go. <laughs> so, Wicked Corruption. This is the adder trait that says when you've got Blight, you do more power damage. And you also have more critical strike damage. So, both of those things are going up. So, 0.1% damage up to 1% in PvE only. So, just a flat extra 12.5% damage, basically, compared to what it once was. And then another 12.5%. Well, oh, yeah. 2.5% on critical strike damage, which is basically a 2.5% DPS increase because you have a 100% crit rate, right? Pretty good. 
overall. And this build should be pretty respectable, actually. Like, it, it should be relatively respectable in terms of its DPS now. Cascading Corruption as well, also getting a sizable DPS increase. 50%, in fact. This is the pulsing damage you have while you're in Shroud. It should hit pretty hard now, to be honest, with all of these buffs. I feel like it won't be... I feel like it shouldn't be amazing compared to a lot of the other builds, I guess, because these numbers are not super, super impressive, and this build was pretty bad, to be honest, um, before these changes. But, you know, look... It's a ranged power build. I like it. You know, like ranged power builds. That's what the game is kind of missing now. And I guess Power Harbinger is going to fit the bill for that, at least for now. We've got some ranger stuff going down here as well. So the name of the game here is actually mostly that they did nerf maces in PvE. Like, there were, this was probably one of the ones that was going to get slapped a little bit. Because this build is so insane. It's 47k DPS with an insane damage profile. With that force of mage damage. And they have nerfed it pretty hard, to be honest. Like, they they nerfed it pretty hard. 25% force of nature damage down to 10%. And outgoing healing as well. Oh, poor old druid getting caught in the crossfire here. Uh, flourish damage. That's mace 2. And wild strikes. I believe that is mace 5. Also going down significantly. Like, will this build still be good? I mean, I, I think it should. Oh, man, it's, it's kind of brutal, actually. Like, it's going to be pretty comparable to where Soul Beast was before. Like, I, I, I almost feel like... I don't know. It's really hard because I don't know exactly where Arena wants these builds to end up at. But depending on, like, what they want the DPS, this could even be a slight over nerf. I feel like this is quite significant, actually. Because you're losing that kind of second Sikkim, but you're also losing damage mods on basically, like, some of your really, really strong skills. Feels big. Um, I think they wanted to make this weapon very hybrid -y, right? They wanted it to be, like, if you spec heal, then you're a healer. If you spec DPS, then you're a DPS. But, I mean, man. Um, that is, uh, it, it, it's, it's pretty brutal. Um, uh, I guess, in terms of these nerfs. But I think it will probably still be playable at the very least, right? Or, or probably pretty strong, right? Because, like, Soul Beast is just inherently good, and the damage is probably going to still be pretty acceptable. Also, breaking news, apparently Power Hub is 42k. Oh, yeah. I guess Power Hub must have been not as bad as I thought then. Uh, but I guess this is a pretty big buff as well, right? It's like, you know, 20% buff at least. Like, yeah, ish. Kind of around that thing. So it's... I guess it was a pretty big buff. Actually, maybe even more than that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess, you know, looking at the numbers, that makes sense. 42k power harbinger, guys. We live in interesting times. Some hammer buffs coming through here as well. Uh, across the board here. To kind of incentivize this play. Definitely a weapon that did not see that much play. It sees play in PvE, obviously. Uh, but I think they want to try and get this. I think they want this, like, mega brawly style. So you go hammer, like, mace, mace in PvP. Like a full melee brawl style ranger. That actually sounds really exciting, actually. And I'm definitely going to be interested to see people kind of experiment around with that. A little bit. We saw some nerfs to Condi uh, Druid in PvP. Um, kind of a really annoying build to deal with, honestly. So I don't really blame them, to be honest. Very frustrating. Uh, very high sustain. Very annoying damage to deal with. Like, a lot of it passive as well. Like, we're dealing with some of these traps, right? Really unfun. Um, so they basically just kind of said, you know what? You know all these traits that are really annoying? We're just going to change them into other things and nerf Healing Spring as well. Wow. Uh, so that's what they did. But yeah, good news. Your Condi Druid is... Still going to be pretty annoying, but less annoying. Less annoying in uh, in PvP. But there is something that is actually pretty exciting uh, with this, actually. And that is Wilderness Survival. You can be the tank god. It really puts the survival into the wilderness now. Um, so if you want to have, like, the ultimate tank druid build in PvE, I guess, uh, when you're tanking, uh, you don't really want to sack marksmanship i'm not gonna lie outside of sarah cm but for sarah cm refined toxins that you get five percent damage reduction uh and even more when you're below 50 percent 10 percent actually pretty cool stuff so really strong trait there and actually carnivore this trait is big by the way the number on this in pve is crazy whenever you get a cc you steal 3,000 health um, from your target, which is really good, by the way, because um, you can spam your Mace CC, you can spam your Warhorn for CC as well, of course. You've got Celestial Avatar days and stuff like that. Like, you can take utility skills that also CC. So you can actually do kind of a little bit of nifty DPS increase on your heal Druid build in PvE, but also mega sustain, like, when you're dealing with it. like, absolutely mega sustain if you have the Wilderness Survival thing there as well. It might be quite interesting to see how this actually plays out in PvP as well, actually, because they shuffled some of the 
condition damage, uh, condition cleansing stuff around. I could actually see this trait being a thing on some kind of untamed build, uh, or even a soul beast build that utilizes hammer and mace mace, like very high CC, and you get the Condi Cleanse from Empathic Bond, um, and then you could take Carnivore and sustain yourself really well uh, with your CC abilities on your maces and on your hammer. Really kind of cool role-playing concept that we see there, I think. I'm very interested to see how that actually ends up panning out there as well, especially now that we've seen these numbers. It's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, exactly, right? Because the lifesteal, you already have good lifesteal on Untamed anyway, right? Uh, from the, you know, the minor trait. So even more lifesteal. Lifesteal Ranger is now a thing, guys. Very exciting. Again, on the World Bus Award support nerfs, uh, here, we have no alacrity on Druid anymore. It's going to be Might instead. Now, realistically, you probably want to... I mean, that means in World Buster World, you're just going to go... You know, you won't go for the alacrity. You'll probably just go for uh, uh, Lingering Light, which is a pretty fun trait to use. Pretty cool, actually, uh, in that regard. Unless you wanted to lean into the Immobilize, uh, potentially. Like, with the kind of the aggressive trait, but maybe not that worth on a heal build. Like, uh, you're going to be giga healing uh, if you go with um, Lingering Light, that's for sure. But yeah, good change overall, obviously. And nerfing Glyph of Stars in PvP and World Bus World, yep, definitely a good idea there as well. Particularly the Revive component in World Bus World. Again, just toning down the sustain a little bit makes a lot of sense. And this is uh, this is kind of a multi-game mode change here, natural balance. This was whenever you go in CA and drop out of CA, you got a bonus. It used to give you 10% more damage, power and condi, and 10% reduced damage. Uh, overall now you get 300 concentration this is actually a really exciting trait uh for a start this actually makes the druid um hybrid builds like the colony druid builds way more stat efficient right like 300 uh free concentration oh yeah that's pretty good that's a lot of stats uh 20 boon duration right that makes those builds more interesting uh but also you can definitely package this into your heal druid build too uh especially if you've got a herald in your group um because you take the Glyph trait, right, to apply protection, but now that Mace is here, Mace 3 is a lot of protection uptime. Combine that with a Stone Spear or having a Herald in your group, honestly, you're going to be fine. Uh, so you can actually afford to be even more stat efficient on your Healing Druid, uh, get some more Minstrel pieces on, uh, or just get even more healing power out of your build, because you're getting a lot of concentration now. Nature Magic's giving you 240 concentration, Druid is giving you 300 concentration, so a lot of kind of baked in stats for Druid is always good. This kind of allows you to kind of min-max and optimize your stats. Maybe drop your concentration sigil, uh, and then you can just, yeah, get another sigil in there as well, and still have 100% boon duration. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Overall there, in my opinion, um, for Druid. Powerful trait. No more damage reduction, though, so you can't be more tanky. And again, kind of a thing there. They wanted, I think they wanted to uh, make it so that you're less tanky in, in uh, PvP. That's kind of like the one target there, and also helping the PvE hybrid builds there as well uh, in that regard. Uh, yeah. Unleash Amber Skulls will no longer be automatically used in auto enabled. Quality of life here, uh, by the way, so you can hold your Unleash skill. That's the reality. Uh, in that regard, and Unnatural Traversal. Uh, this one, this girl's apparently bugged right now, which is unlucky, I guess. Uh, but you do get Quickness uh, instead of Might. Wow. How exciting is that, guys? So even more Quickness on Time for Untamed. Kind of like a... I think they're trying to help... Um, PvP Untamed here, again, is the main target here. So you can jump on someone, get Quickness, and then BAM! Like, smack them with your Hilt Bash, right? And then maul them and stuff like that. So I think that's kind of the, the goal here as well. Uh, PvE, you don't really need it, right? Because you can, can self-quickness yourself really easy. If you're playing kind of like the, the self-sustaining uh, Untamed build, you, you get quickness anyway. So not a big deal. Uh, the Rev stuff. Ooh, so here's the big deal. One, big nerf to support Rev in World vs. World. Will it still be good? Yes. Will it be way less obnoxious? Also, yes. Yo! Nice. We absolutely... Love to see that. It is fantastic stuff. It really is. Okay. Uh, but now that we've got past all of that, okay, uh, in particular, energy expulsion. No more resistance and stability spam. Nice. Definitely for the best, if you ask me. This is this is not good. But the big news here is actually Renegade. So it turns out that this is actually really good. I think people were a little bit worried about this. Quite rightly so, to be fair, actually. People were worried about this Renegade rework, that the numbers weren't going to be good, or the CC was going to be missing, or, or this or that, or whatever, and it wasn't going to work out. No, no, it's the end. And you know what? Fair enough. It was certainly a big change, and I think that that's naturally going to have a little bit of anxiety attached to it. But 
Good news, actually. Good news, good news, good news. The changes actually worked out pretty well, in my opinion, for basically all versions of Rev. Um, the numbers on these are actually good. Condi Ren is absolutely cranking. Um, Heal Renegade might kind of uh, be helped out in World Buster Lord, because guess what? You now have a ranged Immobilize. Oh, the, the traits are not... Yeah, it's not showing properly, but basically the, um, uh, the Stunny one here, okay, is... Uh, this one does immobilize. It is pretty good. It's like a ranged immobilize thing that you can put down on people. Razor Claws is the damage one. It does a lot of damage, actually. Uh, the numbers are looking pretty good on that. Applies a little bleed venom to everyone. Dark Razor's Daring. This is the AoE Days. And what's also pretty interesting about this one uh, is that they made it. As they, I, I think I even said they should do this. Ha! See, they, they watch the stream. Nah, probably not. They probably just have a brain. This actually does 400 bonus defiance damage. So this is now basically the same amount of CC as it was, but instant. So it's actually just insane uh, in terms of the amount of CC that you can put out on Renegade. Uh, with this too. Really, really strong, actually. And then Break Racer's Bastion now has that barrier when it's empowered. So basically the way this works is whenever you cast one of these little... Um, one of the summons, the next one you cast within a couple of seconds will be stronger and activate instantly. Uh, so pretty powerful utility there as well. And has this little mini game of uh, moving around your skills and using one, then you empower the next one, then you empower You can kind of chain them together in a pretty cool way, actually. And then Soul Cleave Summit has just been slightly buffed, bit of a quality of life, costs less energy, less upkeep, uh, and uh, of course basically has a faster casting time as well. So you can get it up and then immediately combo into something else immediately. But yeah, I think this rework actually worked out pretty well. I'd almost be slightly scared about competitive because kind of range targeted instant days and range targeted immobilize can be very annoying because the radius is huge, especially for PvP. So I'd almost be a little bit scared there. Like Renegade has kind of uh, traumatized, I think, a lot of Guild Wars 2 players in PvP historically, but we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, uh, we'll see how that one goes. It's, uh, you know, I don't think Renegade is super good right now. I think it's one of the, the weakest specs in PvP, so... Hopefully it doesn't rear its ugly head and have to get nerfed yet again with this stuff. Ah, oh, bit of a sad change here. I understand why they did this, because uh, boon extension is a really scary thing. Uh, I feel like they maybe could have split this and maybe just not make it do it in PvP in World vs. World, and just maybe left it in PvE, but Imperial Impact, the boon dodge, unfortunately, it no longer extends boons on allies. I'm afraid... It instead just gives you a lot more might and a lot more protection. Um, I think this is a change to try and make the it, this trait a bit more balanceable. Boon extension is really scary. It leads to incredibly degenerate metas, in, especially in PvP and World vs. World. And uh, This is a pretty niche trait in PvE as well. There were, the, the, the whole like boon extension hybrid build didn't really exist. It was mostly for like a self-sustained build that you would use. Um, which is like, you know, very, very niche, obviously. Uh, but it was a cool build for sure. Uh, and it, it will still work, obviously, but definitely makes it a lot worse. Um, and, you know, significantly weaker. Uh, there, but yeah, this is kind of like a design change to make it more balanceable, I think, in, in competitive. Uh, specifically, and that allows them to kind of crank these numbers up a little bit uh, to make them a bit, a bit stronger, a bit more usable. In this regard, so unlucky for all the Vindies, but yeah, that's what's going on with that change. Thief, oh, we don't need to read anything else. Deadeye, oh man, I, I think I'm going to get some angry comments for this, but you know what, let's do it anyway. They nerfed Deadeye in PvP really hard. <laughs> yes, they did. Initiative cost on Death Street, 6 to 7 in PvP. Death's Advance, initiative cost 4 to 5. Shadow's Rejuvenation, initiative gain on Stealth. Um, science scope. So specific dead eye change on Shadows of Rejuvenation. It goes down from two to one when you have science scope and PvP. That's whenever you do the dodge roll. Basically, you get a stealth, so you don't get your initiative back. Mel with the shadows, super speed with silent scope, 1.5 to 0 0.5. So specific dead eye change. Absolutely big nerfs here on dead eye um, initiative restoration, maneuverability, and of course the super speed there as well. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. You know, when I think, man, Deadeye in PvP, I don't think, wow, this is going to be a fun match. I always go, wow, this is going to be extremely unfun. Because uh, that is what Deadeye is, to be honest. It's, it's not a particularly fun build to play against, especially on certain classes that have very little counterplay against it. So am I happy to see Deadeye get nerfed? Honestly, yes. I uh, Look, get back to Spectre, okay? Like, just log on to your Spectre or your Daredevil and have fun.
Okay, like those are still annoying, but nowhere near as unfun to deal with as Dead Eye is. So, haha, GG, nice. Oh, and by the way, guys, before anyone says, but Dead Eye wasn't good, just a reminder that Dead Eye wins the monthly. Okay, All right? Let's uh, let's not mess about here. Let's not, you know. Someone said on my last balance preview that Dead Eye isn't even good outside of gold. It literally won the monthly AT during the the video where that guy was talking about it. Okay, like that's unhinged. That is actual unhinged behavior. But Good news for Deadeye mains in PvE, because all of your rifle skills basically pierce now, and all of the critical strike stuff that give you more damage while you're above health thresholds. Well, good news, it's 50% now. Nice. Easy peasy. We love to see that. So, Thief, just way more consistent, way more playable in, in PvE even when it comes to Deadeye, which, honestly, I do like. That is actually a good idea. I approve. Well done, ArenaNet. Being over 90% health to keep all your damage... It definitely feels pretty bad, actually. It's it's not a good time. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely not a good time. Uh, in that regard. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, yeah, there are a couple of other changes. I kind of forgot about these. Yeah, you can see they also made Shadow Mode cooldown a lot lower in PvE only. Quickness Deadeye gets a lot more damage because of the stolen skills. One in the chamber gets more damage as well. So Quickness Deadeye honestly should be performing pretty okay, I feel like, in terms of its damage output here, which is actually pretty cool uh, in this regard. And uh, yeah, Mercy has ammo count as well. So if you take this, you're not going to get screwed over as much by like you having to change targets, for example, um, on Deadeye, which is definitely one of the pain points of Deadeye in general, right? It's like if you lose your mark, it's like, oh, okay, well, I mean, you know, that that's unfortunate. You know, that's you hate to see that. Another big one is actually Havoc Specialist. So you don't have to spam your dodges on Daredevil to upkeep the damage buff. Um, so now you just get a flat damage increase. Uh, when your endurance is not full, as opposed to 5% per bar. Honestly, make improves the playability of Thief significantly. Because uh, any build that kind of forces you to dodge a lot to upkeep this modifier, especially if it kind of wants you to burn all of your dodges, is very rough uh, in that type of situation. You you really don't want to have a build like that. I, I think this is a good change. Um, a play, really nice playability change for Thief overall. Kind of across the board for PvE, right? Um, and yeah, some Dead Eye Nerf, some PvP. Good job. I like that. Ha 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 ha. Dead Eye Mains cry. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> okay. I admit it. Now I'm just trying to piss him off. Okay. Look, you know, I, I, I'm out of control here, right? Okay. Look. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. Alrighty then. So, we're up to our final class. It is Warrior. In this update, we've tuned up a uh, few of the Warrior Lesson News options. I don't know why I'm reading this. We, we already know this, okay? Uh, they fixed a bunch of bugs on staff. Nice. I like that. I approve. This is, uh, nice. I think this is actually the fewer unblockable sacks than intended. That might be the weird thing where if you hit anyone with it, the weakness will become unblockable. And I, I think it was like the order of operations that was causing this. That might be what's uh, going on there. Star of Warrior, pretty cool, by the way, actually. Uh, good in competitive play. And actually, you know, Heal Berserker, it's really not bad. Like, yeah, it's really, really not bad. Definitely a, a cool playable build. Uh, oh, uh, I, well, I'll mention this again at the end of the video, but I will probably do a full new weapon breakdown video, I think. Um... Yeah, at some point in the future. But anyway, stay tuned for that, I guess. Look, you know, you got to subscribe. That's why you got to subscribe and hit the bell, okay? And follow me on Twitch. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, some Spellbreaker buffs uh, across the board in PvP. Just more damage on our Greatsword skills, our Greatsword burst as well. And Spellbreaker, it's actually a build that um, is kind of around. You do see Spellbreaker in PvP right now. And it's one of those classic duelist builds, right, that wants to get pushed and like in particular when we're seeing some nerfs to other builds particularly like the druid stuff because druid very dominant in kind of that duelist position uh for a while now like very very tanky very very good has that kind of support element as well at the same time bit of a hybrid uh with some nerfs happening there i think this definitely leaves some room for spellbreaker to kind of get back into the mix actually uh and yeah it's a good build it's it's kind of like it's one of the builds that I'm always kind of happy to see in, in PvP, if I'm not going to lie. it's Except in the team fight, then it's annoying. And support spellbreak is kind of annoying. But that's also kind of a thing now with uh, Warrior Staff. Oh no, it's over. But yeah, I like uh, I honestly like uh, Duelist Spellbreaker. It's one of the more fair builds that exists. Very classic dueling build. So seeing some buffs there is definitely nice uh, in that regard. There as well. And some random buffs to uh, Berserker as well. Wow, I mean, I'm not sure if this stuff is particularly meaningful, but... 
it does exist. Right, that's uh, that's all I can say. And they buffed the dagger berserker burst skill. I think if you're going to play berserker in PvP, you're still going to be going with Condi. Um, you know, the mace build and just smashing people over the head with the mace. And now it does more power damage. Bit weird. I think you even run rabbit amulet on that. So you're not going to get a crazy amount of value out of that. But outside of your might stacking, I guess. But yeah, I mean, they're increasing the numbers, guys. They're going up. And if the number goes up, it must be good. That's all I can say about this. You know, I need we need to do some extensive rush testing. Because they have claimed... ArenaNet has made a mistake. They have claimed that they fixed rush. Okay? <laughs> And you know what? I was going to say it. That is a bold claim. You know, it's a bold claim. Uh, they've said they fixed it multiple times. Have they fixed it this time? We don't know. Um, hopefully they have, because this is really annoying, especially in competitive when sometimes you use rush on someone and it will just randomly go off to the edge or it will randomly just miss them, right? It can just, you know, press Greatsword 5, completely miss your target. That uh, definitely feels pretty bad. It's not a good feeling when that happens. Let me put it like that. It really, really isn't. Uh, but anyway, that's actually it for the balance changes. And yeah, that's basically it. There's a bit of world polish here, a couple of bug fixes. Uh, overall, actually a really fun patch. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I think, you know, there's a, a work in progress. I'd like to see some more adjustment to Temple of Feather, actually, in particular, to kind of make it more of, an, uh, of a target for intermediate players. But overall, um, I think this is a pretty impactful patch. It's a big one. Cool balance patch, especially for World versus World. Pretty, you know, inconsequential, I feel like, in PvE in particular. Like, yeah, you know, oh, this is a cop buff. Woo, yeah, woo, wow, exciting, wow, cool. Uh, but yeah, really fun for World versus World, I think. Addressing some pretty important issues and some really good quality of life, guys. Very nice quality of life changes. But anyway, that's going to just about do it, I think, for me. It's actually 1 a.m. at the time of recording this. Goodness me, we're a workhorse. I've been streaming for 11 hours and 26 minutes. You really can't be rid of me, my friends. Like, uh, you'll, you'll never be free from me. I'll never leave. But anyway... That is going to just about do it for this patch breakdown. Hopefully you gamers have enjoyed this. Hopefully you found it interesting. And of course, stay tuned for more. In particular, we had the new weapons get added to the game. I actually completely forgot to mention that. Um, I guess that was a while ago, to be fair. Not this patch, but you know, it was a, it was a while ago. But stay tuned. We'll do a brand new weapon review of all the new weapons that were added to the game. Uh, that's coming soon on YouTube. Stay tuned. Probably on Twitch as well. But anyway, that's going to be it, gamers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Follow on Twitch. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on all social medias. Get on the Patreon. Subscribe on Twitch. Come back and watch every single day. And of course, there's more to come. I'll see you all next time. See you next time, gamers. I'm out of here. I need to be able to actually move off the screen there. But I, I, it's quite difficult to do that. I'd have to... I have a slide here.